Hello and welcome to Savantis Fast Class. My name is Emily. I'm a marketing specialist at Savantis and today I'm going to talk about segments and subscription lists. So let's start with the context. Whenever we try to communicate, whether that be verbally, non-verbally, even through other means like the art that we create, we are or should always be cognizant of our audience. In fact, as marketers and salespeople, I know that you know our job is all about figuring out who our target audience is. From there, we need to learn about them. What will make them want to do business with us? What can we say and do to convince them that we have their perfect product or we are the perfect business that they want to buy from? Only by figuring out who they are uh, what their motivations, desires, values, needs are, can we create a message that will appeal to them? Understanding your audience is one of the most important things about rhetoric, which is the art of persuasion. But complicating your job is that you almost certainly have many smaller groups that make up your target audience. You can't approach them with the same exact marketing messages. You have to find a way to reach them all. We're talking about questions like, what do I say to them? But also, when do I engage them? How often? Through what avenues? When do I know to up my volume of communication to keep them interested or back off because I might irritate them? And important for our lesson today is how do I keep track of all of this? Well, segments and subscription lists are tools in Dynamics 365 Marketing to help you organize your target audience subsets so you can be incredibly intentional about to whom you send your outbound marketing efforts. Uh, because even if you have a wonderfully designed, clearly written email, it won't accomplish anything if the right people aren't seeing it. Segments, let's start there, are used with customer journeys to apply advanced audience targeting to our outbound marketing strategy. So I'm gonna go ahead and open um, marketing right now. The segments page is hosted underneath the customer's header, and that's all in the left navigation area. Make sure you're in the outbound marketing uh, tab or area. Uh, you can see we have one for real-time marketing, one for event planning. You want to be in outbound marketing. Um, when we click new, at the top of the segment area, you're presented with two options. So the first one is static segments. And as the name implies, they're unchanging. Once we create the segment and add members, it will stay the same until someone manually, manually goes into the segment and makes updates. They are great for quick one-off email blasts or for groups of contacts that really aren't going to need to be updated too often. But, a dynamic segment, on the other hand, which I'm going to click into now. <laughs> and see, I'm going to skip uh, templates because we're going to do it all on our own from scratch here. A dynamic segment, on the other hand, though, uh, they're set up using logic threads that query all contacts for that data, both on the profile record level with demographic data and the interaction record level with behavioral data like email opens, link clicks, form submissions, event registrations. In each case, uh, the queries filter through only the contacts that meet those criteria and as their information changes, the segments will automatically add or remove contacts accordingly. Logic queries can be very simple, uh, like a segment can target who, uh, you know, only contacts whose address is in a certain state, or they can be really complex and uh, multifaceted. So an example would be a segment targeting contacts from just two cities, say Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota, that's where I am, who are women and who clicked on one of your emails in the past month. This type of filtering may feel familiar if you've used the advanced feature, advanced find feature in Dynamics 365. Um, there's, uh, that's in sales and marketing. Uh, let's create a quick 
dynamic segment so you can see what the canvas looks like. I want to set up a birthday segment so that we can send out a happy birthday email with a coupon code. So let's go ahead and name that at the top of this canvas here. I will just name it birthday month, uh, just to keep it simple. Let's go ahead and scope out these tabs at the top here. So the members tab, uh, you can see nothing's in here right now, but it will contain all of the members of the segment. Um, once we add queries in the definition area in that canvas, um, and once we make it go live, actually, we can't really do anything with uh, seeing members until we go live with the segment. Now the generals tab, uh, this is where we can see all of its details. Um, you can see and change the time zone. Uh, you can change the name here as well. You can see the owner who, it's me right now, but I can also change that. And then you can add a description. I'm going to do that. Um, just make a really simple one. Birthdays within one month, that's the description. Once the segment is live and has been used, you're also going to be able to see an insights tab over here as well. But let's jump back to our canvas under definition and we can go ahead and add a block. We have three block options here. Um, add query block uh, is going to let you add contacts based on a variety of demographic attributes in their profile. Add behavior block is going to add contacts that have completed some sort of action, like filling out a contact us form. And add a segment block is actually going to let us like nest egg another uh, segment and all their members into this one. So we just want to pull contacts who have birthdays within the month. Uh, that's going to be demographic data on their contact record. So I'm going to click add query block. And you want to pick a starting location here. Um, and I have contacts right now. You can see that we can choose lead or maybe a customer voice survey or a marketing list. We're going to start with contact. Um, and next, we're going to select an attribute. So since we're going to find their birthday, we want to assign the birthday attribute. We can scroll down to birthday. Similarly, we can type birthday and click enter. Here we go. Birthday. And now you can see that next to this query attribute is an operator field, and it defines the way we are going to query values. We can query for many associations or relationships of an attribute, and some of these options are going to disappear depending on uh, what attribute we choose. So let's go ahead and randomly pick another one, let's say um, consent given. And we can see here we have far fewer um, operators than we had before, but we'll go back to birthday. And we want the birthday to be within, is within X. So we'll pick that one, which uh, pops open another like associated or dynamic field that we can click between here. And we're going to pick uh, is within X, is within one, and months. We could do the same thing by clicking, you know, like adding 30 days, it would be similar, but we're going to just do one month. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and add uh, another query from, uh, you know, in addition to when their birthday is. Um, we have three options here. Add condition to contact is going to add another filter role um, to the existing clause, allowing you to query another contact attribute in addition to this current one. That's what we're going to choose, but let's look at the other ones. Add group is going to allow us to add another group of people to query via another query, uh, clause group, excuse me, and then add related entity. Uh, this is going to link the current entity selected, in this case, case it's the contact entity, um, to another related entity through a specific field of one of the two entities. So that's a little confusing. Let's do an example. Um, maybe I want to add the account entity to the query that searches for the company name 
on the contact record, which is connected to the account name on the account entity. So that's an example of that. Um, we're going to add this one. And just want to pause for a second really quickly and talk about this. Um, it's just generally thought of as good, mem uh, good manners of segment creation to always add a line to the query that uh, make sure that the accounts or the contacts that you are querying are active. Okay, this is going to ensure that no inactive record receives an email. So we want to make this a standard of our organization if we can. Why would we want to send an email to a defunct contact? Plus, this is going to lower our bounce rates, which is a good thing. So I'm going to do that now. We'll just click status is, and you see we have a lot of options here, is, is not, uh, contains data, does not contain data. We're going to click is, and we have two options, inactive or active. We want to make sure their status is active. So there we go. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we have just finished our segment. We've just told the system that we only want to find active contacts who have birthdays within one month. Great. Um, one thing in addition to this, though, that I want to show you on this page is um, if I were to add another block, any of these, let's just do a query block, you can see that uh, this additional form of logic, this tiny little logic box pops up. Um, and we have three options here. Uh, to connect these two blocks of logic. We can do or, and also, and then but not. And these are further ways of refining the details of the segment and to either widen or narrow the scope of the audience. So I wanted to point that out for you. Um, now I could go ahead and press go live and then we could go to the members area and see um, who is in our members tab. Once you do that, you may notice that you're missing contacts or there are members in here that shouldn't be. Uh, in that case, you can edit um, the, the segment. There will be an edit button up here and there will also be a stop button. So you can use either one of those. Editing the segment will uh, automatically, upon saving it again, make it go live again while stopping it is going to make sure that it doesn't go live right after. And you'll have to purposefully, intentionally click that go live button. Um, this edit and save functionality works for other live records you want to update as well, like emails and customer journeys. So other 365 applications like Sales and Business Central also make use of marketing lists. And um, I'm going to go into the subscription list area of the customer's like heading. Um, subscription lists and marketing lists, as you can see here, they're all held in the same area. We have marketing lists and we have subscription lists. They are the same entity in D365. They're both lists that you can assign contacts to or they can uh, sign up for themselves to receive emails for certain things like a newsletter. We make a distinction between marketing and subscription lists because the latter are only accessible in D365 marketing and they have a few locked settings that we'll see. Uh, subscription lists are usually made for people to opt in to email lists themselves. You can use subscription lists also like a segment in a customer journey. Subscription lists are really easy to create. You just click new subscription list. You enter its name, um, purpose, source, and description if you want to, and then you click save. That's really it. There's no go live. It's automatically open, but they must be associated with other things in marketing to actually be of use to you. Uh, so first you need a subscription center. Uh, which is a marketing page. So let's go there just to see it under internet marketing, marketing pages. And you can see here that we have a subscription center. It's the default marketing page. This is a place for known contacts to use to manage their communication preferences and contact details with your organization. Um, really importantly, 
there must be some sort of don't email me or unsubscribe button included, uh, which is required in some locations by law. I'm sure you've seen these before at the bottom of emails. It says unsubscribe or I don't want to receive these emails anymore. A subscription center can either be a Dynamics native marketing page with a marketing form on it, which is best practices. We're going to suggest that you do that. Um, but it can also be a marketing landing page that uh, marketing landing page form made within Dynamics 365 here um, that you embed on an external site. That is possible as well. Marketing forms and pages are held under this marketing internet marketing tab. You see that's where we are right now. And then also marketing forms are here as well. So I'm going to pop over there just so you can see that we do in fact have a default default subscription center form and the form type is subscription center. Awesome. So those come out of the box and you can also customize them. So we're not really going to dig into creating a marketing page or marketing form in this fast class, but I do want to show you an example of a marketing page uh, with a Dynamics 365 marketing form embedded on it, which is going to enable somebody to sign up for subscription lists. So let's take a look at that. Pull that up for us. And here it is. So um, we can see that um, this is an example of a catsforhumanity.com landing page. It is a fictitious website. It has a call to action, which is sign up for our bi-weekly newsletter with details about what the newsletter will include. So get the scoop on the latest adoptable fur runs, plus our shelter events, merch, and recent cat vice columns. So we can see they really like puns and plays on words here. So underneath that, we see a second call to action. Uh, enter your email below. And right underneath that is a uh, form. Actually, this is the form embedded here from Dynamics 365 Marketing. Um, and you can enter your name first and last, an optional phone number, and your email address. And you can also see that there are three buttons that um, you can click on here. Um, and each one of these um, associates to something in Dynamics 365 Marketing. So the first one is auto checked, which is something that you can do in D365 Marketing. And it makes sense uh, to have this one auto checked uh, to auto sign them up for the Cats for Humanity newsletter, since that is the landing page that they're on. So on the back end, this is going to send a message, I guess, to marketing and um, add this email address and this person to that particular newsletter. The next button is actually very similar. By checking that box, they're going to be added to yet another and separate subscription list uh, for donation calls. Um, and then finally, this is uh, the last button. I have read and agreed to the terms of use and customer privacy policy. So that's just a button that um, will be required in Dynamics 365 Marketing on this form for them to check before they can click Submit. Uh, this is obviously a very um, kind of elaborate landing page and a semi-elaborate form, but it can be something very simple and straightforward, like adding just the email address and then a button that says sign me up for the newsletter, and that would be it. So um, that's all I have for you today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our fast class on segments and subscription lists in Dynamics 365 Marketing. What else do you want us to cover? Uh, if you want to see anything from Fast Class, uh, go ahead and add it to the topic suggestions in the Fast Class community. But thank you so much for joining us this week. Please join us again next week. Our topic is going to be Merge Account and Contact Records in Dynamics 365 CRM. Thank you.